Hey guys, and welcome to another devlog video for the Animal Behavior Kit. I'm super excited to finally share some of the new features I've added to the taming system. If you didn't see the previous video, I made a quick announcement that after getting some feedback from you guys in the community, I decided to work on improvement to the taming system um, that will be coming in ABK 1.3. But I would also work on having the taming system be its own separate asset that can be uh, put on the marketplace for people that just want that capability. Uh, so to do that, I didn't just want to separate the current functionality. I took the opportunity to add some features that you guys have been asking uh, previously and some of the new features that I kind of thought it would be cool to add. Um, so a lot, of the, a lot of the work I've been doing this week has been separating the code to the ground uh, base class in ABK. And the way I've done it is by using interfaces. Basically, if I uh, show you real quick, you see that there's a bunch of new interface functions here and events that I have here uh, that I've actually had to redo just to make sure that the taming system works with a generic class. So if you if you are interested in this system, you're obviously not gonna get the full ground animal base because that has pretty much everything else from ABK, all the other systems. I'm creating a simple, and you can see it here, simple ground animal class that will have just what the taming system needs so you can actually use it with uh, either my simple class or any other AI class that you have. Um, so that's uh, kind of a lot of the, the boring work that I've been doing, uh, making sure that things don't break, that things are working um, after I'm doing a lot of the rewriting. Um, and if I click play here, you'll see uh, one, of the, one of the cool things I've done is I, you know, even even right now, if you use the pawn from uh, from ABK and you try to aim using the the aiming mode, uh, before it used to have this widget, and it was very slow and clunky. So the first thing I did is I wanted to make sure that the aiming was correct. That way, it's a lot more accurate. So you can see now that I have a much more accurate reticule, and it's instant. It's not uh, it's not doing a, a trace. It's basically using the center of the screen and doing a trace that way. So this is a lot nicer. Uh, and if you decide to use my character, you're gonna notice a really big improvement in accuracy when you're trying to aim, uh, you know, to shoot or to, or to order your AI to go to certain places or attack a, a target. I've also posted a, a screenshot on Discord of a, a quick preview. And for those of you that saw it, you can probably uh, figure this out, but I've also added a new character controller which is the first person character controller. Um, and if I click play here, you can see that I've added the, an FPS view and it's the same thing. You can go into um, aim mode by pressing Q. And the reason I did that is because I wanted to test, again, several improvements that I've made on how to migrate all of this functionality to a custom character. So usually you buy uh, ABK and you wanna combine it with other systems. Uh, something like the survival game kit, for example, you don't want to use my character blueprint. You want to use that system's blueprint. So up until now, it was a very uh, cumbersome process where you had to copy a lot of code. Um, and I made a video that it, it takes about an hour, but I was never too happy. So as I'm making improvements and cutting the time down, I've decided to add this additional uh, controller. So now you have two examples. If you're doing an FPS, you can you can choose this character as your base and then copy the code from here. Or if you're doing a third person game with third person character, you can use the other one. Um, so yeah. All right, so besides that, now let's go to the fun part. Uh, I've talked about kind of all the base stuff that I've done, uh, but the fun part is all of the new um, abilities that I've added. And again, if you saw the screenshot, you would know what I'm talking about. So the first one I've added, if I'm gonna go ahead and tame this guy here, you'll see at the bottom right corner that there's two new commands in green and blue, right? So the green one I showed in the last video, you now have the ability to summon and dismiss your pet. And uh, you can do that with multiple pets. And I have a, a basic system of saving the pets so I can, I can um, save uh, one or more pets, and then when I go to the next level, I can actually uh, reload them, right? Or even save them to disk the way that, it, that I have it. 
The other uh, command that I, that I got some feedback from is fetch, is the number six that you see there. So the idea came from games like Far Cry. Um, you know, some, some of you guys mentioned, hey, it would be really cool if uh, my pet can get things for me. Like in Far Cry 5, if you have a dog, for example, uh, the dog can go and get ammo for you or certain objects. And I thought that was a really cool ability. So what you see here is actually the ability to add a custom command. Uh, and in this case, the sample I gave was fetch, but all the code is in the blueprint. It's in the companion blueprint. So if you wanted to override that function to do literally anything else you wanted, you could easily do it without affecting the behavior tree or anything else. The core functionality is still there, but you now have the ability to have a custom command. And in this case, I decided that the sample custom command was fetch. So I have this little uh, spheres here. And if I point them out and I say, hey, why don't you go ahead and fetch that? You'll see that the AI would go grab the little ball and dump it in my lap. And I even made, made sure that it has the marker. And if I just kind of run away, you'll see that it just, it won't drop it until it gets to me. And then as soon as it drops it, you can see that it simulates physics. Um, another cool thing I did is because it can get hard uh, to aim precisely for small objects. What I do is I, I shoot a ray and then wherever it hits, I do a sphere trace and then look for objects with a certain tag. So you can't, uh, you can't uh, use this ability with any object. It has to have a specific tag. And that way you get to control what your, your pet or your companion can actually fetch for you, right? So if you have like a weapon class, you can put this um, in, the, in the base class and then every weapon can be picked up. Uh, but maybe you don't want specific objects not to be picked up, right? So you do have that control. Uh, obviously, uh, there is no, um, there's no uh, limit, right? You can pick up pretty much anything. So to that point, I have this giant cube here that I've added the tag, and you can see how this guy literally just picks up this massive cube and brings it to me. Uh, and it's simulating physics, so you can see the guy just kind of going all over the place. So probably you don't want to do that in your game, but the point was you can, you can fetch pretty much anything. Um, just grab it again. Um, so all you need is to add a tag and make sure that the, that the object is movable. And there you go. Uh, and you can even use, use it on skeletal meshes. So I can go and, and ask this guy to go and get me this other deer, uh, which funny enough, you can see he's just carrying them. It's, it's pretty funny. Uh, and then he just kind of drops them off. Uh, probably want to restrict that uh, to only objects, but right now I don't have any restrictions, so you can actually do it on skeletal meshes. Uh, if you like. So I, I thought I'll show you guys that use case because I thought it was pretty funny. Uh, another cool thing that I've added, and I'm going to go ahead and, and go to the properties for the companion, and I'm going to make sure that I can enter a custom name. Uh, and, and you'll see why in a second, right? So right now, um, I'm putting the option of using a custom name. So if I go here and say, okay, I'm going to make sure that this guy, I'm going to give this guy the name Bambi. And you can see that I have Bambi here but I want more pets. So I'm going to go ahead and make this guy Bambi's mom. I'm going to grab this guy. Uh, and I have these guys. And let's make sure that we have this guy. And let's, I don't know. Uh, Bob. Whatever. Uh, and I have these guys here, right? So, um, Obviously, one of the things is I can summon and dismiss them, and it saves the names. You can see there that the names are saved. So uh, not only will you save the type of pet, but you'll actually save the custom name. And this is all replicated. So if I were to load uh, a new level and I summon my pets, you will all see their proper names. But perhaps the coolest thing here is that now it's on the blue. I can actually control my pets. Uh, and that would be useful in certain games, right? So if you have a pet, uh, maybe you can control your pet to do specific things. Maybe your pet is super fast or has a super jump or a special ability that you need for gameplay. And now you can actually control your pet. But what happens if you have more than one pet? And that's why I wanted to, to do the custom names. This is the last thing I've added just because I didn't want to 
limit the possess and unpossess ability to one pet. So there's a new ability that allows you to rotate and focus on a pet. Uh, so if I press my, in this case is C, you'll see at the bottom that, uh, and I'm gonna keep pressing it, that I'm cycling through all of my active pets. And whatever name appears there is going to be the, the focused or active pet. So if I say uh, Bambina in this case, and with Bambina focus, quote unquote focused, I press X, I am now controlling Bambina specifically out of the group. And you can see that I can, um, I can sprint. Basically, I can add any ability I want to this blueprint and I'm just controlling Bambina. If I press X again, I go back and you can see Bambina's over there. And I say, okay, now that Bambina's over there, I wanna go ahead and control Bob. And then I can grab Bob and do something else. Maybe Bob stays here. I go back and I say, okay, I wanna now control Bambi. And I possess Bambi and I can go somewhere else. This is really, really cool, right? And of course, in this case, I just have the same class, but imagine you have different kinds of pets for your game. Maybe you have, uh, you know, a really small pet, maybe a rat, raccoon, a squirrel, and that pet can go into really small places. Maybe you have a bear that's more like a tank. Um, so you can really get creative here uh, with your different animals. I'm gonna recall them all here. Uh, from the comment and Bambi's gonna have a hard time because she is all the way up there um, but you get the point right uh, so not only can you um, can you control your pet but you can actually uh, choose which pet you want to control uh, and remember each pet or each uh, pet class can have different abilities so again for uh, gameplay purposes you can have a mixed group and you can choose which pets uh, are controlled All right, and that is pretty much it. I actually feel like this is a pretty good uh, set of features to to uh, include for 1.3. Uh, thank you guys, um, those of you who submitted your ideas. I know that one of the big ideas was saving and loading, so you can have a permanent pet in your game, so that's added. The ability to have more than one pet, that's added. The fetch command, which can be really interesting for your pet to bring you stuff while you're fighting, like Far Cry 5 and 6. And then if you wanted to control your pet because it has special abilities, right, uh, you get to do that as well. Uh, and this works seamlessly with uh, both the third person and first person class. Uh, it's all fully replicated, by the way. So if you want, if you're doing a multiplayer game, all of that is fully replicated. And um, yeah, now I need to finish working on the, um, the simple ground class that's gonna be part of a separate asset. So that's still not done. And I have to work on the levels. Uh, I'm, I have a, an idea of a, of a fun little level that you can incorporate all these abilities so we can kind of show in a gameplay wise how you can use different pets uh, to solve a puzzle. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, but I just wanted to give you guys a, a, a quick update of everything that's coming on the taming system again. This is going to be available as a separate asset in the marketplace, but this is also coming as a freebie in 1.3 for the animal behavior kit. So let me know what you think. If you have any cool ideas, any feedback, comments, let me know in the video or uh, join Discord and uh, you can message me there. I'm, I'm usually there. Uh, so yeah, let me know what you guys think and I will talk to you in the next video.